Welcome to the series. Excuse me, sir. Please use your mic. Welcome to these hearings. <coughs> the authority has published a discussion document on a framework for introducing local loop unbundling. And this document sets out the authority's views on how Chapter 8 of the ECA, which pertains to facilities leasing, uh, makes provision for the unbundling of the local loop. For our purposes, the local loop is that portion of a network which connects the subscriber to the balance of an ECNS licensee's electronic communications network. It should be noted that although the discussion document focused on the proper local loop, LED applies equally to any technology. The purpose of these hearings is to hear stakeholder views on the issues raised in the discussion document and any related issues. With regards to matters of procedure, Because has published a discussion document <coughs> on a proposed framework for LLU, and that's in Government Gazette 34382 three, on the 22nd of June of this year. We've held one-on-one -on -one meetings with all those stakeholders who re requested it, and written submissions were submitted by the 14th of September by all parties with the exception of solidarity whose late submission was condoned. We're now conducting public hearings on the subject. And the following procedure in terms of Section 4C1 of the ACASA Act will apply. <coughs> And the sequence of oral representations by interested parties will follow the notice published um, in the, uh, on the website and in the latest media notice uh, by the authority. Each party will be afforded 40 minutes to make its oral presentation before the committee, and, will be allowed, and that will be followed by a question and answer session. The committee passing questions and, the, and the, uh, posing questions to the party responding thereto. All interested parties will be afforded a right to reply and rebuttal on Thursday the 13th as, as contemplated in section 4C5B of the ECASA Act. As the authority has not received any request of any of the parties, that has not any, received any such request, the parties will be all, all representing before the people. My apologies, it's badly worded. If we not received any request of the contrary, the, the inquiry will not be held in camera in terms of section 4C, the 4C6B of the ICOS Act. And the proceedings are therefore open to the public as contemplated in section 4B6B of the ICOS Act. The authority has chosen <coughs> not to exercise the right to subpoena by notice in writing in the prescribed form any person who may be in possession or custody of documents or objects which may be reasonably necessary for the purposes of this inquiry as contemplated in section 4C2A to C of the ECASA Act. All parties are entitled to legal representation or other advisor when such parties make an oral representation contemplated in section 4B2B of the ECASA Act and the authority or the committee has received two requests for confidentiality, confidentiality from Tolcott and Neachon. <coughs> the committee, after discussion of the, uh, the discussion of the applicable legislation, decided to grant confidentiality to both licensees for those portions of their submissions. <coughs> after the, um, the conclusion of the questions from the panel, we will invite questions from the floor to the presenters. Um, there are forms which you may fill in. Uh, please put your name and uh, other details and your question and pass that to the front when you give it give it when you um, and we will read out the question on your behalf and, and the respondent will, the presenters will, will answer those questions once we've finished all of that after deliberating on the inputs received the council will make findings and recommendations on the matter of a framework for the local urban bundling this will public, be published together with reasons therefore We've been asked to grant permission for these proceedings to be streamed live. Since these hearings are public, we've granted permission on condition that no interference with the recording system occurs. The live streaming of this event is just one example of the positive benefits of access to the internet and the efficient use of technology and infrastructure. We welcome our first stakeholder, MTN, to open the proceedings for their presentation. Good morning, Chairperson. <coughs> Councillor, members of the panel, thank you very much for this opportunity to address you on uh, the issue of the local loop unbundling discussion document as issued by CASA. Firstly, let me introduce myself and then my panel members sitting 
with me today. My name is Graham de Vries. Uh, I look after regulatory affairs at MTN. To my immediate right is Peter Malebia. He is the general manager for strategy and marketing support. Then Jeff Blake, senior manager, technical regulatory issues, and uh, William Khanare, who is our manager for markets and competition. Just in terms of the agenda, we are not going to reiterate all the arguments as raised in our written submission. We are just going to highlight a few matters for you today. In terms of the agenda, we are going to look at what is local loop unbundling. <coughs> it's fixed and copper line LLU. And then we're going to pose a question and run through a few submissions or arguments with you in relation to the inclusion of mobile operators. So what is LLU? The ECA, the Electronic Communications Act, does not define what is the local loop. As a result, one will have to look at other pieces or other places as well in terms of what is the local loop. And the ICASA discussion document states that the local loop is a physical circuit connecting the electronic communications network termination point at the subscriber's premises to the main distribution frame or an equivalent facility in an electronic communications network and or means the physical twisted metallic pair circuit connecting the electronic communications network point at the subscriber's premises and so on. We have also looked at what is stated in the EU's unbundled local loop regulations and in that particular document it is defined as the physical twisted metallic pair circuit connecting the network termination point at the subscriber's premises to the main distribution frame or the equivalent facility in a fixed telephone network and I've highlighted a few in bold concepts. There are a few other definitions of local loop being utilized in and whilst people are busy with unbundling of the local loop and the OECD defines the local loop as the telecommunication circuit usually pairs of copper wire between the user's premises and the telecommunications operator main distribution frame. So why are we boring you with these particular kind of concepts? Because it's quite intriguing to note that the discussion document as issued by ACASA so very specifically refers to the fixed line portion, the twisted to metallic pair. And then it became an issue also of the inclusion of wireless local loop or mobile local loop. We're not exactly <laughs> sure at this particular moment in time as to which particular one of those two is favored by ICASA. We have not been given a definition to actually constructively engage with ICASA on and today, if I'm not mistaken, I understand that as part of the chairperson's opening remarks that the concept now of an ECN network and a technology agnostic thought process is creeping in. Safe to say that the above are fixed line concepts. So from a legal interpretation point of view, where do we need to go with what is the local loop? We need to understand it with it within the context of it being a term of art specifically referring to the fixed line network we submit to you today. So what are the benefits of local loop button bundling within the fixed line space? Now there's been a lot of statements in the submissions made by the various parties but we believe ladies and gentlemen of the panel and chairperson through you the local loop unbundling is normally a remedy imposed on fixed line incumbents. It was a remedy that is placed to actually open up that last mile access as they call it. It allows access for new entrants, lots of claims, lots of submissions made to state that new competitive services can actually then as a result of that be run over these unbundled local loops. Uh, reduction in prices, the question mark there is that obviously there are a couple of parties that state that 
it will not necessarily come uh, or reduce prices and then also there is the concept of an uh, access or line deficit that needs to be taken into consideration as well and it leads to greater consumer choice. In terms of the fixed line, ladies and gentlemen, we believe it's not a menu, it's a migration. Um, it can start with bitstream access, then line sharing, then going to full local loop unbundling and sub loop unbundling. Uh, the complexity of bitstream access is not as great or as vast as the complexity in terms of subloop unbundling or full local loop unbundling. There's also a cost that one needs to keep in mind here um, and obviously a choice of services can increase in terms of the way in which this is done. Now obviously the authority can decide in its own discretion as to which particular one of these it wishes to put in place. But ladies and gentlemen, maybe it is better to start small and actually implement than it is to go big and have to backtrack. The question that has been posed in the discussion document, amongst others, asks the question as to whether these facilities leasing guidelines that have already been published by the authority in the past can in fact be utilized for unbundling the copper local loop. We believe that it can. However, as an alternative, section 43.8 of the ECA dictates, it actually says must, that the authority is obliged to prescribe a list of essential facilities to enable local loops, subloops, international access and other facilities subject to section 43.1. Now an essential facility, and I don't think I will read it for you today, but an essential facility is defined in the Act and it can be done to state that the copper local loop can then be deemed as an essential facility, thereby actually making it possible for ICASA to unbundle the local loop, so to speak, or implement the unbundling of the local loop. In terms of the mobile operators and LLU, we wish to actually bring the following matters to the attention of ICASA. Again, the question is wireless local loop? Is it mobile local loop? It seems, ladies and gentlemen, that it may have been as an afterthought that mobile local loop or wireless local loop, again, one is not sure which of these concepts needs to be included, was brought in as an afterthought. Um, there have been opinions that LLU should include other access technologies and more particularly mobile. We find that to be a peculiar concept within the context of what we all know LLU to be. So we are trying to or are we trying to read into the act a mobile local loop or a wireless local loop and we believe that that is what is being asked of you to do. We submit to you ladies and gentlemen of the panel that mobile should not be included in this fixed local loop unbundling process. So ladies and gentlemen there is nothing local in the wireless local loop and why do we say that? So unlike fixed, the technical structure of mobile telephony does not permit a local loop. It's just not been designed in that particular way. So the calls for wireless local loop unbundling or mobile local, local loop unbundling is going to find not only as we've expressed problems from a legal interpretational point of view, but also from a technical point of view. There is no local breakout possible at the radio, radio access network. Breakout for data would be at the GGSA. Since by its very nature calls are mobile, it's impossible to isolate an individual area or a BTS. So that is what local loop in the wireless space really ought to be. It's about trying to actually get to an equivalent. But there isn't an equivalent. 
the exposure is not only to the radio access network but also to the core network there are calls for opening up the mobile network right up to the HLR well if you do that then it's not local loop on bundling uh, ladies and gentlemen it's more it's more like the last hundred miles as opposed to the last mile so both from a legal point of view and from a technical point of view we face some difficulties in increasing the concept of local loop on bundling which is a fixed or a copper line thought process into mobile There are other regulatory remedies that exist in the market to stimulate competition and the regulatory authority have indeed not only looked at those particular remedies but have also implemented some of those particular remedies. So mobile number portability provides the, the consumer with choice of switching operators while still retaining their number. Carrier pre-selection allows consumers the choice of operator to carry their call on a call-by-call -call basis. These are all remedies that have already been placed into the market space or implemented by the regulatory authority. Now again in terms of carrier pre-selection, South Africa is one of the few countries in the world that have got carrier pre-selection on mobile. And indeed in those particular countries in the world where carrier pre-selection was indeed placed on mobile or implemented in mobile, they have in fact been withdrawn as well. So MTN, uh, sorry, apologies, South Africa seems to be a shining example, at least in the CPS space, of swimming upstream. When we get to the issue of local loop unbundling, are we again going to do the same thing? we are not aware of places in the world where local loop and bundling has been implemented in the mobile space so where are we going with this particular local loop and bundling so we then ask as to why must a remedy that has really been placed or thought up in the fixed line space be made applicable in the mobile competitive market space. We are indeed already as MTN providing data services via our uh, use or the service, the APN service, where we do allow what we call WPPs or wireless data providers to create and offer services to consumers. So even if the regulatory authority is indeed able to coin the phrase of a mobile local loop on bundling, and have it sit within the context of a legal interpretation there is already a competitive service being offered by the mobile or by MTN in that particular space <coughs> so we believe ladies and gentlemen that there is or there are a significant number of operators providing wireless communications can and has been duplicated and as a consequence mobile networks cannot be considered an essential facility either. So why are we raising it? Well we raise it as an alternative in the fixed line space. Now the temptation must surely be then to actually include the mobile networks as an essential facility as well. We are arguing today ladies and gentlemen that that cannot be done either. Indian understanding of section 43.1 is that the leasing of facilities is limited to those facilities as defined by the ECA. We believe the spectrum which is actually being argued for here in an indirect way is not to be and cannot be included as a facility. So ladies and gentlemen, technically there really isn't a local loop in the mobile environment. We believe that Economic efficiency dictates that regulation should address a market failure. So why are we trying to include a mobile a local a loop unbundling, whatever that may mean, as a remedy in a space where we haven't even decided nor done an investigation as to whether or not there is a market failure in that particular space. 
So if it is the authority's intention to broaden the scope to, in, to include mobile devices or mobile facilities, it is Empion's opinion that it would exceed the ambit of Chapter 8. Now if it exceeds the ambit of Chapter 8, then we will have to look at somewhere else to go to find as to what we need to do. And we believe that if that is to be done, we will have no choice but to conduct the required process in terms of a Chapter 10 process. So, let's identify the market failure in the relevant market. Let's identify the relevant market. Let's determine which particular operator has SMP in that particular market. That there is some form of ineffective competition and then place an LLU or a mobile lo local loop remedy on this particular operator in the identified and respective market. So ladies and gentlemen, in terms of a conclusion, let's focus on what is LLU. It's a fixed line concept. Let's focus on that on South Africa. There's been calls to state that it's been a long time coming. And indeed it has. And just to take a few examples, and in terms of the timeline, in Austria, January 1998. In Belgium, October 2000. In Finland, June 1997. January 2001 in France. 2000 or December 2001 in, in Hungary. Ireland, December 2000. Ladies and gentlemen, we are sitting in 2011. We haven't done fixed line LLU. We want to introduce mobile LLU to coin a phrase. So are we really serious of putting in place local loop on bundling? Is the question. Are we going to lose the focus, which some parties, which shall remain nameless, will actually want? Because then local loop unbundling will take another few years to actually implement. We believe that facilities leasing guidelines can be used for copper local loop unbundling as proposed by the authority. We believe that it can be done in a progressive way, that stream access and then so on. It depends on the amount of investment that needs to take place also by those parties wishing to partake in LLU. And ladies and gentlemen, finally, and probably the most important message today from us is that local loop unbundling as a fixed line remedy, as a fixed line concept, cannot be made applicable to mobile or mobile local loop unbundling or wireless local loop unbundling, or whichever term we wish to attach to this particular concept because of legal, technical, and economic reasons. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. DeFuse. Thank you, Mr. DeFuse. Um, Councilor Curry. It appears in brackets, for instance, and wireless local loop, and then interspersed during the whole document they say that the, oh, this, this can be made applicable to mobile as well. And we are here today, ladies and gentlemen, and through you, Councillor, to dispel that particular rule. There is no such thing, at least in the mobile space, as a wireless local loop. Arguments have been made <coughs> that we need to have access right up to your HLR. Well, if you have access right up to the HLR, that is not local loop and bundle. That is the whole network that is to be opened up. So we really are facing a incredible broadening of the scope of what is deemed, or what is really known as local loop unbundling. It's a fixed line concept. Now obviously there are benefits in their submissions to them should they be able to get that because they say that, well, let's do it at Lyric as well. So. Are we really looking at competition here, or are, or are they arguing it as a competitor? 
who wish to receive a regulated <coughs> subsidy from the regulator. So our submission today is that we are really not aligned and for legal, <laughs> technical reasons, there is no such thing as a wireless local loop. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, given that the definition of electronic communication facility contained in Section 1 of the ECA is central, if not critical, to the LLU process, do you believe that the definition is a closed definition which only speaks to what is contained in Section 1, or is it a non exhaustive definition that can go beyond a uh, 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 Section 1 definition? If you look at what the electronic, you specifically referring to you chair the definition of electronic communications facility that is. Yes, yes, yes. If you look at the, the, the definition, it, it says wire, cable, antenna, mass, satellite transponder. It goes on to say earth station, radio apparatus, which can be used for in connection with electronic communications, including where applicable co-location, monitoring equipment, etc. Now that may be the case, or that is the definition of electronic communications facility. But if you look at what they're actually asking, they're asking not that they, you open as the regulator, the facility as such, they're asking you to give access, access to the radio network frequency. So we say that the call to open up is not a call to open up an electronic communications facility, but the frequency that has been assigned to us. And as a result of that, we say these two are mutually exclusive. Thank you, Chair. Morning, MG. Just to follow up on that, that issue, the ECA stipulates that radio apparatus is a facility. Spectrum represents a transmission medium for access to the end user, as does the physical local loop. Now, what is important is that the only way radio apparatus may be used to generate revenue is if it is paired with a spectrum assignment. Therefore, one view is that the economic facility is that of the physical radio apparatus and the spectrum assignment. What is your view on that one? And on top of that, does national roaming, as per the MTN ATO relationship, not effectively represent spectrum sharing anyway, which is a facilities lead, potentially a facilities leasing argument? Chairperson, through you. I think what we're arguing here today Councillor is the following. What we're looking at is a twisting of what an LLU is to try and include mobile in there. With a stated intention that the regulator should intervene. Now, a regulator should only intervene when there is a problem in that particular market space. Now, the representation of an ATAR MTN mobile roaming agreement is a commercial implementation of that. So if you are arguing that as a result of the way in which the law has been written, that that by definition gives you the right or the ability to merely through a regulatory fiat intervene in the mobile space, you will still have to deal with the fact that there is a competitive market out there. That roaming is not only confined to MTN and ATA, but also to CELC and Vodacom. So you will have to have a couple of, and that's why we said there are technical, legal, and economic reasons why you need to be very careful in terms of merely wanting to intervene in the market. In a market that is competitive, that is demonstrably <coughs> competitive. Again, we come down to the issue at hand. It's LLU we are talking about, local loop unbundling, for which there is no definition in that. So you need to look at what is the term of art. So you're going to continue to try and find the way into the mobile space, and we're going to continue to state to you that it is competitive. There are four mobile operators out there. There are two MVNOs, if that is the definition that you wish to attach to the MVNOs. 
whilst the local loop is in a real focus area, we're going to lose, and it's not going to happen in the fixed line copper space if we embark on the process of let's just open up the mobile space which is competitive. Again, we say it to you, we submit to you. But we seem to be swimming upstream. The rest of the world have done what LLU is. They've done copper unbundling, so to speak. We've not done that at all. Now we wish to broaden the scope to include mobile as well and coin a phrase. We're going to find difficulty, so we need to find it. Ask ourselves, is that where we wish to go with this particular concept? Yeah, thank you, Grant, for that exposition. If we may just go back to the definition again, I just want to ask one question. Uh, I'd like to know what is your understanding of the expression, um, but not limited to. Surely there is a reason why the legislature chose to make use of that expression. Indeed, but I think there's a term called I used in generis, if I'm not mistaken, or you need to interpret that which you stated. Mm -hmm. And I'm not such a good lawyer any longer, I must admit. <laughs> but you have to, if that term is, you will have to look at what is uh, in the previous examples, wire, cable, antenna, mast, or any other thing needs to be interpreted in the context of what is stated there. So can't, you can't utilize what is not limited to, to now, you know, as this state as that is carte blanche to include anything and everything. And let's, let's just include mobile in there as well, the frequency and anything else that we would like to actually see in there. And, and that, I believe, is, is, would be an incorrect interpretation or a use of what is not limited to any. Thank you. follow up to Peter's question, uh, I just want to understand how you characterize MVO model in terms of enemy. of MVNO mobile virtual network operator again um, how long is a piece of string I guess there's a continuum of um, what can be seen as a mobile virtual network operator are our service providers that we have appointed a form of a mobile virtual network operator there are arguments that state that it is but however what we would like to add to that is again we're seeming to want to conflate two issues again. Mobile space, MVNO, mobile virtual network operator, is equal to local loop on bundling. It is not. It's never been. I, frankly, I don't think that anywhere else in the world has local loop on bundling been equated to mobile virtual network operator. We can only but submit to you and beseech you not to try and conflate these two particular issues because they are not the same, they are not similar, and they are not equal. Okay, um, my last question. Uh, MTN, you proposed on your, uh, uh, on your submission, uh, you proposed structural separation to incumbent. Um, Refer to the study done by Robert W. Credel and uh, Gregory Central argue that in the paper, structural separation incumbent exchange is necessary for competition argue that a military structural separation will harm consumer welfare and reduce a uh, resource of investment by facilitating anti-competitive strategy by incumbent. What is MTM's view on this? There are many different choices that the regulator can do at this particular moment in time. One of them is structural separation. 
I believe that's the BT Open Reach concept, if I'm not mistaken. But that's not necessarily what you need to do. And that is why we also put on the table today that LLU can be done in a progressive way. So there are many choices that are facing the regulator at the current time. If the regulator believes that that is going to be the outcome of that particular set, uh, decision of structural separation, then don't do it. But you will only be able to know whether or not that is in fact the best option if you've actually studied that in detail. These are decisions that have vast implications not only for the operator, but also for the country at large. So the regulator, when it exercises these particular choices, must make very, very sure that he's exercising the right choice. Because the decisions that we make today is going to reverberate in this industry from today in the next five to 10 years. Thank you. Um, <coughs> Would you be prepared to offer a APM product at a wholesale price? And if so, if you consider the high volume, low price model. Through you, Mr. Chen. Um, I think as stated in the, in the presentation today, um, I think um, this specific process is uh, related to our understanding of uh, the LLU uh, and I think questions related to what MTN is doing um, from a competition perspective in the marketplace we already have uh, existing corporate APNs that we are offering so our view is that that um, is a different process which uh, we feel that is not part of the LLU hearings thank you please bear with us and answer the questions we will hear the next question <coughs> As stated again, um, MTN has already existing APN products uh, in the marketplace, which we are offering commercially, which we are continuing to review and evaluate how competitive we are in the marketplace. Thank you. There's a follow-up question to that. Um, would you consider that APN might be an equivalent to a bit stream product? The answer is yes. And um, how would you describe an APN regional breakout service? Sorry, Chair, through you, could you repeat that question, please? How would you describe an APN regional breakout service? To you, Chair, um, I'm not quite sure if we follow your question, but let's just say that the APNs are assigned to the GPRS network nodes. Those GPRS network nodes are not necessarily regional, and it's access to the full core of the network. So again, still nothing local in, in the APN market. In the event of a full loop, LAU, the copper loop, would you make use of it? Which we use? <coughs> <coughs> um. MTN is here today as a mobile operator, as MTN PTY Limited. And I'm sure that our marketing gurus will take any offer that they can make a commercial service out of. But at the current time, MTN is rolling out its own network, core, as well as radio network, and we will continue to do so and invest in that particular network. Um, the risk obviously is that should mobile be included in a local loop on bundling process, we will then have to look critically at what those particular <coughs> obligations which may or may not be placed by ICASA 
on uh, that particular thought process. So we will have to ascertain as to whether full local loop unbundling refers to fixed line and fixed line only, the twisted copper pair, or whether it actually will obviously include our uh, mobile uh, local loop as well. And obviously the question will color um, and in terms of will you make you know, use of full local loop unbundling when it is offered. If it is imposed on us, then obviously we will have to offer it and will not be able to utilize it. So there are some risks uh, for us in terms of this particular process. questions. Do you believe that bundling of the last mile would uh, increase the number of uh, fixed lines in use? And, and the second question, do you believe that bundling of the, um, the local loop would improve the utilization of the capacity of installed loops and their scope? And, and installed loops for copper and associated um, network infrastructure? Person three, you should the local loop unbundling, or should that question relate to fixed line local loop unbundling only? Then, yes, there is a very good chance that those there will be greater take up and those particular lines lying idle. But it depends again to a large extent not only on the business model but also or the, the regulatory decision that will be taken in terms of what the costs are. It relates to access deficit, whether that is to be included or not. In terms of the costing, um, you know, if an access deficit is two million rand, then I'm sure anybody will say, "Well, I'll be happy to actually help pay off the two million rand." If the access deficit is four billion rand, if you ask that same question again, people might say no, and as a result of that, the take-up may actually not be as much as what the um, expectation might be. So. There are a lot of questions still to be answered, and a yes or no qu uh, answer is not necessarily, um, well, I can't give it, but if the business model is there, it has been shown that it can actually increase the take up of services, correct? Thank you, Chair. Just one question and it's a concept for you to think about. What is your view of the concept of purchasing outright geographic segments of the installed fixed line infrastructure, for example, an entire local exchange in some area? It's, for example, a rural area where the lines aren't being used. What's your view of that concept, purchasing outright a portion of a, of a, of a fixed line network? Um, that's a very interesting concept, uh, Chairperson, through you. Um, if it is to be made to work within an LLU, I wonder if that is going to be made to work, but in as far as it relates to the take-up of those services, if it is done in a way where a party is interested in actually doing that and then offering in the rural area quite possibly um, with the utilization of that, it might actually increase the utilization of rural telecommunications in South Africa. Absolutely. But again, is, are we going to, is, is this particular concept relating to local loop and bundling? With, uh, is the regulatory authority considering that particular thought process within local loop and bundling? I really don't have the answer today in terms of whether that can be made to work within LLU. It's some kind, it's, it's, it takes some thinking to see, if it, it will take some thinking. I, I don't have the full answer for you today. Would you be willing to give us your views on that concept? Maybe a written submission within 14 days? Sure. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you.
just one more question. Uh, um, um, do you believe that there is an explicit or implicit uh, enabling provision in the ECA that endows the uh, that endows the CASA with authorization to unbundle the local loop? Person through you, I, I think the answer is that if you look at the way in which ICASA has, has proposed the solution to the problem, which is to try to, to utilize the current facilities leasing guidelines, I think that, that is a very valid and appropriate way forward. Now, if that is that is probably an implicit way of moving forward, um, local loop unbundling is mentioned in, in, in the Act uh, within a particular context, utilize those particular um, contexts and Again, it comes down to, we believe that, as proposed by the authority, that the um, facilities leasing guidelines is the way to go in terms of local loop unbundling, but again, with the rider that it's fixed local loop unbundling, of course, and a mobile local loop or wireless local loop unbundling. With regards to your APN services, are you would you consider offering an interconnection to your APN services at one or more of the existing uh, internet exchange points in South Africa? Chairperson, through you, we don't have an answer for you today. We'll have to revert to you on, on that particular question. Is Thank you very much, MTN. I'd like to invite any questions from the floor. Councillor, can you can you just repeat that question? We're debating the exact uh, wording of that particular question, so that we can get back to you on that one. Uh, with regards to your APN services, would MTN consider offering into? connection to your APN services at one or more of the existing internet exchange points in South Africa. We have a question from Amish China, is that correct? Um, from an organization called Advini, the question is to MTN, and it says, you state there is no local breakout in the radio access network. Vodafone UK and Orange UK announced in February 2007 that they will share the radio access network. How is this possible? And there's a reference to www.cellular-news.com story-21865.ch. Um, Chairperson, through you, I'd like to invite any Without having the full context of what will happened in the in the UK market, we believe that there, that is infrastructure sharing, and we are already practicing infrastructure sharing in South Africa as it relates to uh, base stations, um, as we speak. Any further questions? Any further questions? Voucher to look, to look 
uh, from CWU. Does MTNC LLU as a risk to telecom as they see mobile local loop as a risk to themselves? to that is not necessary. If you look at what has happened in other spaces in the world or other places in the world, apologies, it's not necessarily so that those particular companies have closed their doors. Uh, one example which we have spoken about earlier today, the BT Open Reach concept, is a success. So there's no real reason to see it as a risk. Obviously it depends on uh, a number of the decisions that ICASA will take as well in terms of how it wishes to implement LLU, but in general, no, we don't see it as a risk. There's an opportunity here for telecom. We believe that <coughs> that can be taken, and if managed well and properly, it can be a success. Thank you very much, MTF, for your, your presentation.